It was a full moon on a warm Hispanic night. A young man stands on a hill overlooking Saguntum, an allied city-state of Rome. As this young man stares, he remembers a promise he gave his father many years ago in a religious pact to never be a friend of Rome, and so starts the Second Punic War. It's 218 BC, and Hannibal Barca, Carthaginian general in Hispania, attacks and ransacks the city of Saguntum. Then continuing towards Italy with his army, with the thought of using a southern pass, but due to being blocked by Scipio the Elder, Hannibal then leads his army to the base of the Alps, preparing to cross them. He used a highly debated route, and but Hannibal did cross the Alps, facing bitter cold, hunger, and many ambushes from local Gallic tribes. Sheer determination and will saw Hannibal and his army finally reach the Po Valley in northern Italy with a weakened army who had lost many troops. Hannibal was soon intercepted by Publius Cornelius Scipio the Elder, father of Scipio Africanus, at the Battle of the Ticinus. Hannibal won this engagement, severely injuring Scipio, who was saved by his son, one said Scipio Africanus. This victory bolstered Hannibal's ranks with around 10,000 Gauls who decided to join Hannibal's army in their march through Italy. The next battle was the River Trebia which saw Consul Tiberius Longus have his army completely routed by Hannibal's flanking tactics, driving the Romans from the field of battle completely. Next, Rome sent co-consuls Gnaeus Servilius and Gaius Flaminius to block the east and west approaches to Rome and southern Italy. Hannibal decided to split both armies by going through the Arno, a marshy area, and for three long nights, suffering many bites from mosquitoes and disease, his army crossed the Apennines and the Arno, emerging near Lake Tresemene, where Hannibal had lost sight in one eye due to infection. Hannibal performed the first known turning movement in military history trying to coax Flaminius into a fight. Flaminius finally took the bait and pursued Hannibal towards Lake Tresemene. Hannibal discovered a natural defile on the lake's northern shore and devised a cunning plan fooling Flaminius into thinking that Hannibal's entire army was camped at the other side of the lake. The Romans decided to attack and they were entering the defile in marching formation when Hannibal sprung his trap, the bulk of his army were actually arrayed above the Romans at their flank. And at that moment, Hannibal unleashed hell and slammed into the flank of the Roman legions who were not prepared to fight. They were still marching. And yet another army was destroyed by Hannibal and his brilliant tactics on the battlefield. Next, Rome gave Quintus Fabius Maximus control and he implemented what was now called the Fabian strategy where he would not engage Hannibal directly but cause him problems. The only problem with this was the Romans thought it was cowardly and decided to go against it. They elected co-consuls Lucius Paulus and Gaius Varro one hesitant to fight Hannibal, the other itching for a fight. And this was what Hannibal wanted. Near the Roman depot at Cannae on a sweltering August morning, 90,000 Roman legion marched into battle to face Hannibal's diverse army, a third of the size. The Romans had packed the mandibles of the legions into a tighter formation than usual in an effort to steamroll Hannibal's army and annihilate it. Hannibal entered the battle in a strange formation himself with a semicircle facing the Roman legions and Hannibal led from the tip of the spear. Nubian and Carthaginian cavalry 
at the flanks, slammed into the less formidable Roman cavalry, eventually driving them from the field. And at the same time, Hannibal's center was being driven back, giving up ground to the Roman legions. And as they were giving ground, the Romans seemed to get more confident and packed tighter, thinking they were about to lay waste to Hannibal and his army. But that was when Hannibal sprung one of the greatest traps in history. By surrounding the Romans on three sides and having his Numidian and Carthaginian cavalry hit the Romans at their six, he performed the first double envelopment in history on a Western battlefield. The Romans lost 70,000 plus troops in a six hour battle. Hannibal then terrorized the Italian countryside for many, many months, but ultimately could never bring Rome to its knees. He then got a message to come back to Carthage because Antonius Publius Cornelius Scipio Africanus was near Zama. At Zama, Hannibal faced Scipio and they met on the battlefield, just those two. Well, any kind of peace talks did not work because the next day they waged war near Zama in Africa. Scipio claimed the day's victory and drove Hannibal's army from the battlefield using Hannibal's own tactics against him. Hannibal then fled Rome and Carthage, went to Greece where he eventually committed suicide by poisoning, ultimately denying Rome its chance for vengeance. And with the passing of Hannibal, thus the saying began, Hannibal ad portus, Hannibal is at the gates. <laughs>